Good afternoon, everyone. This is Stephanie Blake from World Bride Magazine. And we have a wonderful and exciting story for you today. We are featuring Mia Lopez of Ivory and Oak. Mia, say hello to our subscribers today. Hello, everyone. My name is Mia Lopez. As she said, it is very nice to be here. Thank you for having me. So good. Um, we have been uh, a magazine, a service, uh, a subscription, a, a, a subscription service and a platform for women of all age, all walks of life, and of course, men, mm -hmm. um, primarily in the bridal market. And anyone who is looking for services for that very special day for themselves um, or for their loved one. And it is such a pleasure to have uh, services like yourself that will feature today, um, focusing primarily on how to display a loved mm -hmm. one's special day. Like that's so awesome to be able to part of that, to be a part of that portion of the service industry to host a bride or host a loved one or host yes. uh, someone's special day. It is so awesome mm -hmm. to be on that part because it's almost like you're taking their, their special moment or their, their vision of wanting to, to experience this and share it with everybody and bring it to life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how awesome is it to be on that side? So take a few moments, um, tell everybody who you are, what you do, how you got here and, mm -hmm. um, and, and what you and, and what you want to share with them today? Yes, of course, of course. So I guess I can start from the beginning, actually. Um, so as kind of like an introduction, uh, my it all actually started with my father, actually. Um, he was an aeronautical engineer, very, very smart. He taught me everything I know, anything to do with oh, mathematics, wow. to accounting, to uh, engineering uh, to really anything. I would just, well, I, I remember when I was little, I would, he would just sit me uh, with him in front of the TV at like three, four, five o'clock in the morning. He'd be like, hey, hey, <laughs> our show's on, our show's on. He would pick me up out of the crib. He would just sit me in his lap and we would just watch shows about uh, building things, creating things. Wow. And that really uh, sparked an interest in me. And the first event that I actually did was my quinceanera. And for those who don't know, uh, quinceanera, to sum it up, is basically like a wedding with how much planning goes into it. Uh, you have like our, our chambalanes and damas, which is the equivalent to like our bridesmaids and groomsmen. And it's basically like um, a young lady's coming out to society. That's, right. and it's a really, really big tradition that we all do. It's, it's fascinating. When I realized the similarities between the two, I was like, that's interesting. Wow. <laughs> but, um, but the first wedding that I ever did was my quinceanera. And at the time there were a couple of people who were well-known in the area who um, did quinceaneras. And I was looking through their work and I was like, you know what, why don't I just create my own? I mean, yeah. I, I know what it is that I want. I have this idea in my head and for creating uh, one of the biggest events of my life, essentially. So I took it upon myself. I coordinated it. I was sitting there with uh, my mom and my dad, gluing invitations together, oh, wrapping wow. ribbons and flowers. And it literally all started there. And my dad had always wanted to start a business together with me. And he was like, I'll, I'll worry about the construction side or the building side. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. I'll, you taught me everything I know. I'll handle the books. I'll handle the business side. We'll, we'll just be a father-daughter team. Nice. And yeah. And it wasn't until he passed away back in 2016. And that was about a month before uh, my quinceanera. And um, in honor of him, I created Ivory and Oak. Amazing, right? The building, the elements to build and mm -hmm. construct. Mm -hmm. So thoughtful. Wow. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that your father <laughs> seated, you know, those um, special moments, you know, mm -hmm. with you and him and then 
in turn now you want to also do that for other people and make their special moments come yes. to life. So how wonderful. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So as we uh, speak more in depth towards the bridal uh, market and that special day for brides, mm -hmm. how do you see yourself in a market heavily uh, saturated with event planners or special occasion event planners? Mm -hmm. How do you stand out? How do you see yourself being unique? Mm -hmm. I feel as though it's not because the way that I do things, um, I take every client's concern into consideration. Uh, a lot of people that have come to me or who have booked me had told me, yeah, um, they'll tell me that I have to limit myself to what it is that I want for my wedding. And I said, well, why, why do you have to do that? He said, well, because people will put packages and uh, have a set limit of people that I could bring or like a set right. um, type of decoration that I can put for my wedding. I said, well, every person is different. There's no reason that you should have these type of limitations. If this wedding is the the biggest day of your life coming from experience and experiencing those things, I said, no one should have to have limitations That's when it cool. comes to their dreams or try and trying to make them into a reality. So I always tell uh, my clients, I don't set packages. I work with what budget that you have. Right. And I try in my best ability to make your dreams a reality because you're giving me the responsibility and the honor of transforming an empty room into your dream space. Yeah. So I always try to make my clients feel as taken care of as possible. And a lot of them have come to me and said that it's just a whole weight has been lifted off of their shoulders. Uh -huh. They Because I do the very best to treat them like family. And they are because I, and it is such an honor to be able to help them answer all of their questions. I don't sleep. I'm also a college student. So you already know I'm up at like wow. three, four o'clock in the morning, already wow. taking tests. And then I'll have a bride that'll text me. She's like, hey, I'm really worried about this. And I'll answer her call and be like, what's up, girl? You know, tell me what it is that you need. I'll Amazing. be able to fix it for you. <laughs> so, wow, that's two things. All right. So. <laughs> You are, you've also described a little bit of your client, right? Your customer. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to go into a little bit of that because you're, you're, you made comments about them being family and mm -hmm. um, having concerns and you're putting them at ease. So one, mm -hmm. describe a little bit more about who this woman is um, mm -hmm. or man. And, uh, and then you have to tell me how old are you and what college <laughs> are you attending? Well, first, I'm, I literally just turned 21 back in April 11th. So I'm blown uh, away. ink is still fresh on the I <laughs> yeah, am blown still fresh away. On the <laughs> yep. And I'm currently attending uh, University of Memphis. I'm studying international business with a concentration in marketing. I love uh, it. I love it. As far as like making uh, my clients feel taken care of, I always tell myself I'm in the business of making dreams into a reality. So I try to get to know these people, whether because I, I also do a lot of multicultural weddings, anything from Arabic, African, Indian, um, even intercultural, like Hispanic weddings. I'm doing yeah. one uh, that's actually on the 21st. Uh, that's a Honduran and Mexican wedding. So wow. there's a whole lot of different traditions that uh, when they come together, it, it's, a, it's a literally a magical thing. Yeah. Uh, so getting to learn these different cultures, having the experiences that not only, you know, push me to make my client as comfortable as possible and cared for as possible, but it's also a repeating cycle that inspires me to do if not the same, but even more for the next person that comes along. Awesome. So she is definitely a woman of culture. Um, yes, and, yes, definitely. And I love that. I love that, that you, you see an opportunity, even when you have a challenge of a culture that you're being introduced to. So now mm -hmm. you, you've really got to get creative and mm -hmm. envision how you're going to fuse you know, all of these different backgrounds and cultures together to make it momentous. I love that. I love yes. that. 
Um, and I'm so impressed um, at, you know, your youthfulness <laughs> and professionalism. Please say something to another 21 year old who could be um, watching this video with a mom, an auntie, or someone who is looking for uh, event planning for a special event, and you mm -hmm. have their attention, what would you share with that 21 year old? So I feel that anyone that is my age that wants to get into the event planning business, I feel that it's the utmost importance to treat your clients with the best service that you can provide and that they're very, very well taken care of. Um, I know as event planners or event producers, we wear a lot of hats in the industry. We're a therapist, we're an accountant, we're almost a lawyer at times. <laughs> so <laughs> we're a home decorator. So we, and it is our responsibility to, you know, have hospitality experience. And, and moreover, it's the experience, the way that the clients feel when they finish talking to you. And, and that, that's what I feel is the most important. Um, some, another advice that I would probably give uh, would be if you have a mentor uh, or someone that is important to you that is teaching you these things, to make sure that it is someone that uplifts you, but also by the time, if you do surpass them, that they're there to support you 100% all the way. Wow. Um, and another thing that I know, um, it was some advice my mom had told me way, way, way back. And, and this works with any age, doesn't matter if you're 21, if you're 60, if you're 90, it is still very relevant today where if you are learning something and you're in a, in a room to learn, if you are the smartest person in that room, you need to leave because yeah. not only are you doing a disservice to yourself, but to your company as well. Yeah. And a strong, strong piece of advice that I would give would be to always create a standard instead of a goal, whether it be in real life or as a company standard, because I find that goals are very flexible or flimsy if you can yeah. reach it you can fall off you'll hit it that one time and then right. just go on a downward slope from there but if you set an actual standard for yourself that's a constant it's always going to be there and you're going to strive every day to get to meet that standard that's right. and I can definitely say uh it wasn't easy I had to work extremely hard to get to where I am today it's not for someone who is lazy or for the faint of heart, but you will get there with hard work and perseverance. It will come. I love that. I love that. So many nuggets in that one. It's rich. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so rich. And I appreciate that. Um, tell me about a challenge that you've had, mm -hmm. either with a client or a circumstance. And I love your wisdom so far. So I'm, I'm ready to hear what, how you turn that around for your benefit. Well, a biggest factor, because I started my business back when I was around 15, 16 years old. So being a, an event planner that young age, I was always discriminated because of my age. Uh, not a lot of people uh, took me seriously because they were like, hold on, wait a minute. Uh, you're 17, 18, and you're doing events like that. Like, are we sure we should trust you? And I feel like, well, let my work speak for itself because I know what it is that I want and I've worked hard to get to this place. So I deserve to be here just like everyone else does. Age does not equal to experience. And, and that's something that I found uh, really important because I, I listen, I know a girl who's about nine, 10 years old who owns her own lemonade stand and Wonderful. she's running it like nobody's business. <laughs> so I always tell people, if you're being discriminated for your age, let them know, have your work speak for yourself, show them what it is that you can do. Because if you are confident in yourself and you're confident in your work, you won't have to prove to anyone else That's right. that you're able to do it. That's right. I love that. That's amazing. And so I want to also uh, wrap up by just seeing if there is, um, how do people contact you and what area of the world you cover? 
Yes. So I currently am in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I, I am able to travel to any state or country. Um, I came back uh, from Paris to do a kind of like an elopement kind of small wedding that was back in November of last year. So I can literally go anywhere that it is that you need me to. But to contact me, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, and the numbers will be listed on there. It's ivory.oak. Again, that's on Facebook and Instagram, and the numbers to contact me are on my profiles as well. And you can also find uh, my website, uh, which is linked on the Instagram page as well. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mia Lopez. Um, I enjoyed sharing with you and hearing your wisdom. And um, everyone, look for Mia Lopez on her Instagram, Ivory Oak, and on her Facebook. And we will be back with you shortly with more videos from our subscribers and our wonderful uh, people just like Mia who are penetrating the bridal market, making changes and bringing people's um, visions for their loved ones to life.